So I want to show you my latest portable battery power supply thing, if I can. Um, I've shown you one of these before. You've seen quite a few of these, no doubt, um, on YouTube. A lot of people are building them. So, you know, they're, they're nothing new. They're nothing particularly special. Um, and there's nothing particularly special about this other than the fact that I've built it and it's mine. Um, I've had a few of these in the past. Check out my other videos and you'll see them. Um, this particular one is smaller. Not quite as powerful uh, with regards to the battery that I'm using inside. Um, but the other one I was using was, uh, it, it just wasn't working properly. The uh, batteries weren't holding the charge. They were quite old. I'd run the system down below the uh, recommended voltage and it just wasn't recovering, which is understandable with lead, uh, lead acid. Uh, you have to look after them. So what I've done, I've decided to build another one. So I wanted something a little bit smaller than the last one. Uh, using it for camping and radio work. The other was great, it had a 40 odd amp hour battery inside. Um, but it was a bit too big, a bit too heavy uh, and wasn't always uh, needed with all that power. So something smaller was required. Went on to um, YouTube to get a few ideas and a lot of people are using ammo boxes and I thought well that's really the sort of size that I wanted to go for. It's um, handier, it's smaller, it's lighter, um, pick it up easily, it's a good size. It slides well into your boot if you're going camping, it doesn't take all your space up. Um, so I figured yeah let's go for that. So Amazon for this plastic one I think it cost about 14, 14 to 15 pounds. Uh, so it's not an awful lot. Um, it was waterproof as well. Now, obviously, the integrity uh, has been changed because I have drilled a few holes on the sides uh, to help support the shelf. But those bolts are sealed, so I can't see uh, that really making much of a difference for me. Having a look inside, opening it up, and this is what we have. Um, let's bring the camera in a bit closer. Okay, so the idea is pretty simple, uh, and it's the same as what everyone else has done, let's be honest. Inside we have um, two 9 amp hour 12 volt batteries, so I've got 18 amp hours all together inside. And then on the top I'm using uh, an old chopping board, which uh, only cost me a couple of pounds. Trimmed it down to size, and uh, I've mounted a solar uh, charge controller, um, a cigar lighter, USB output, uh, mains 230 volts, um, which is directly from the battery to give me uh, up to 300 watts of, uh, of mains power. Kind of divided into three sections here then. So we've got uh, 12 volts output, which is controlled from the controller. We have a permanent 12 volt supply uh, in the form of Anderson power poles, which goes directly to the battery bypasses this control altogether and then we've got the 240 volt side of things. Now what I wanted to do was to ensure the, um, the efficiency of the batteries inside and I wanted to make sure I didn't run them down and damage them as I have done on previous battery packs. So I figured let's run everything through this uh, inverter. So it gives me up to I believe with this one is 10 amps uh, at 12 volts um, and that should be sufficient because if I'm running a portable fridge that's only sort of four amps tops between three and a half and four amps and then portable charging and cigarette lighter adapter things with plug in it's less than that so yeah 10 should be fine but one of the things I found was that one of the advantages of this charge controller is that when the power goes below 12.5 or 12.4 volts uh, this disconnects your power well, if you're using uh, like a 100 watt radio, um, uh, amateur radio, uh, then when you transmit, you often use a quite a lot of power and it can often signal to this that it's using power and it's taking the battery power below 12 and a half volts temporarily. This would then switch off, which would then turn your radio off and that's no good. Uh, and that's what I found with my other packs. So I wanted to have these Anderson power poles here directly to the battery via a fuse obviously so I would be able to run whatever equipment I want and it wouldn't switch off 
so that's what that's for this up here is ideal for things like the fridge so when the fridge runs the battery down this will get to 12 volts or 12 and a half volts it realize and switch off same with any usb outlets uh, and again um, things like the tuner and some of the receivers i can plug into here and lights i can plug into here again that would run happily until this detects it gets to the required voltage and then switch off thus protecting the battery packs so so far i'm quite pleased with it this uh, power pole connector here this is for my solar panel so i can connect the solar panel to this and charge it up whenever i need to so um so far uh, i've only had it a few days since i finished building it and it's, it's working really well um, this is one of the newer charger controllers i've never used one of these or seen these before um, let me see whether i can uh, just bring you in closer to the screen there there we go trying to do this without uh, getting the glare onto the screen so as you can see from the screen it's showing on the display is 12.9 volts the output is currently switched off so those are switched off there so there's no current drain at all gives you the temperature setting that's quite important i figured because i think depending on the temperature would also depend on uh, the sort of charge it gives you battery um, no solar power connected at the moment so it's sort of showing in sleep mode there so um if i want to turn on this power supply to run something like a light if you're camping or whatever you just press that power button there and as you can see that then displays it's now showing that there's no current being drawn we can demonstrate this quite easily i've got this 12 volt uh light led light this one here cigarette lighter plug i'm going to put it out of the window and the dazzle the lens um plug that into there Oh, still dazzling. And it's on. So the light's on, and you can see it's drawing 1.3 amps. I like this feature. It's nice to be able to keep an indication as to what, you, you know, what you're drawing out. Even if it's not lighting, but other things, other battery-operated appliances like a fridge or you know, radio chargers, phone chargers, whatever, it's good to see what you're pulling out. Especially if you're going to be keeping it on long term and you're going to be having a solar panel connected at the same time because the solar panel will plug in and it'll display here what it's actually charging, what the charge rate is. So you can actually see what's going into the system and what's leaving the system. So if you're going to be running it all day or long time, you can actually see is this going to be lasting me all day, what's going to be happening, how long am I going to get out of the charge. So that's quite useful. So if I just get my lead... I've got a lead here. This is connected to a small solar panel outside. Now, unfortunately, it's early in the morning. It's very uh, overcast, so there's no sun. And the panel's not even pointing in the direction of the sun. So just to give you a quick example, unhook that. So straight away, it's detected there's something plugged in. We have to give it a minute or so just to uh, calculate and register. But that will soon register, probably about... 0.1 of an amp so 100 milliamps uh, that's what they did a few moments ago before i started filming um so yeah so this is basically what we've got so far there's a few alterations i want to make um i want to uh get rid of this usb don't need it to be honest because i've got usbs built into the charge controller so i'm going to take that usb out and plug in another one of these 12 volt auxiliary outputs so that's something I'm going to be doing. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it, really. You've got two other little 12 volt outputs here. Oh, there you go. It's just started registering now. So it's, again, as it was before, 0.1 of an amp. So 100 milliamps coming in, which is expected. It's uh, purely just to demonstrate the feature to you at the moment. So the 240 volt side of things, um, that inverter is powered by that switch there. So as soon as you flick that switch on, that then becomes live. And I'd say it gives me uh, up to 300 watts. So it's quite nice. Um, so there we go. Okay, so bringing you back a little bit there. Just close all these things off. Turn that off. So this is going to be mainly charged via solar panel. Uh, also, if I wanted to charge this using the charger at home, it's a proper lead acid battery charger I have. Um, again, I can connect that then straight directly to the battery via these power pole uh, connectors here. 
so that's another good feature of this. When I'm mobile, under these Velcro straps I've attached, we've got a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug, again with uh, Anderson power pole. The idea being that I can plug that into the vehicle and then from there I can plug into here to charge this system from the car. Now I'm assuming that I can plug in uh, this into the cigarette lighter plug in your car and uh, this charge controller will cope with the current coming in from that and still charge the battery safely. I'm not entirely sure. Um, hopefully someone out there will uh, probably leave a comment saying yes you can or no you shouldn't do that for whatever reason but that's what the idea is at the moment. So that's why I've got that there. And then also I've got this other <coughs> excuse me I've got this other 12 volt uh, output here little uh, cigarette lighter socket again connected to Anderson power pole so that can plug into here if I needed an extra output or I can plug that into the permanent supply uh, from the battery to give me uh, a permanent uh, cigarette lighter output there again for whatever radius I'm plugging in will depend on, on what we have there so it's just another option so I like this so just fastens in nicely there using uh, you know auxiliary leads better view there for you so that's how that works so yeah this is charging nicely it's now just gone up to 200 milliamps voltage is great it shows you nicely 12.9 flicking to 13 volts okay so that's pretty much it really that's the uh, the power box um, as time goes by I'll be making a few alterations to it because that's how we work um, but it is fairly light and compact, portable, um, and like I say, this will slide in and out of your car with your other camping equipment a lot easier than the last one I made. So, um, there you go. Any comments, suggestions, please leave them below. Like I say, this is nothing new. Uh, a lot of people have been making these. I've made a few, which you've obviously seen anyway. So, there you go. Right, gonna go. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. Hope that's uh, of some interest or some use. And um, I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.